first technical session. Uh, it is, uh, we have here uh, Dr. Ulrich Berg. He is a German scientist and uh, he has a, a very vast experience in homotherapy, Agnihotra, homotherapy. And uh, uh, as we know that uh, uh, this is uh, Agnihotra. What we know uh, is uh, it is a religious practice there in India. Dr. Ulrich Berg, uh, who did her uh, master's in 1974 from of University of Erlen and in philosophy of uh, science sociology. Then doctor of philosophy in 1976 from the same university in logic, mathematics and psychology. Now he's an assistant professor in Constance University teaching logic and methodology of science to the student of different faculties. He has about 42 year experience of the HOMA forming in the research of the HOMA forming. He has about, uh, uh, since 1980, uh, he is coordinating research on homotherapy in the beginning, mainly in the Eastern European countries like Russia, Ukraine, Poland, Yugoslavia, etc. Since a couple of years, uh, also in India, here, cooperation with different universities like Palampur Agriculture University, CSA Kanpur University, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, Dharwad University, IIT Kadakpur, uh, Vivekananda University, North, uh, North Maharashtra University, Pantanagar Agriculture University. He has given uh, more than 150 talks, invited lectures and keynote addresses at the university and in the national and international conferences on different forum. Uh, he has uh, got very important uh, publications. I would like to name some of them. Uh, like uh, bringing Homa organic farming into the mainstream of Indian agriculture system. This is the proceedings of brainstorming conference in cooperation with planning commission, government of India. And uh, another publication, the energy fields of Agnihotra. Effect of Agnihotra on microorganisms. Uh, effect of Agnihotra ash on drug resistant E. coli in water. A manual suggested experiment with Agnihotra. Global COVID-19 and Agnihotra. Impact of Homa organic farming in mitigating soil, water, and other environment crisis. Agnihotra as an inexpensive method of treat HIV AIDS and so many more. We have seen Dr. Ulrich, he has dedicated his whole life for the globalization of this technology. He is continuously visiting in the every corner of the world for you know, making pe people aware and learn about this technology. Here, in Indian, with the Indian people, uh, many times I think that we claim about this technology that this is our technology. We think that this is originated from India, so this is our technology. <coughs> but at the same time, there is a con uh, controversy. We claim that this is, this is our technology, but we don't have faith on it, that it is there is something scientific. We just take homotherapy or Agnihotra or Havan or Yeb Yeb, just like one of the religious practices. Here, Dr. Ulrich Burke will be speaking on the scientific aspect of the Agnihotra and homotherapy. And he now you will be able to know that Agnihotra, this is not a simple religious practice, but how it is important, not only for the human body, but the entire Earth, planet Earth. How it is important, how it is scientific, how much science behind this technology? And I would like to uh, mention here a very important thing that we know that uh, the pupil in the ancient time will involve to perform the yagya. They will call rishi. The rishi were performed yagya in ancient time. The rishis are the researchers. It was the researchers who, who did research to the uh, uh, and all these things. So now you are going to have a Rishi of the modern modern uh, uh, era, Dr. Ulrich Berg, who will explain you about the yag and homotherapy and all these things. So without taking much time, much time, I invite Dr. Ulrich Berg to present his view on the Agnihotra and Homa farming tools for a sustainable development on planet Earth. So over to you, sir. Okay, Dr. Himanshu, very, uh, thanks a lot uh, again for the invitation. Thanks a lot for the introduction. Of course, uh, I'm not a Rishi of the modern times. I'm just somebody who tries to uh, understand this ancient Vedic knowledge, 
which, by the way, was never the uh, property of any uh, people, and uh, uh, it is given to the whole mankind. So let's start. Um, uh, this, okay, you already saw the introduction. Um, let's look at the challenges of the present situation. Science is the search for truth in order to have the, help solve the problems of our present time. And the most prominent problems which humanity faces today are env environmental problems, environmental pollution and climate change. Biosciences can help a lot to mitigate these problems and make uh, changes for sustainable development of our planet. <clears throat> Uh, such a sustainable development was discussed by the United Nations and they adopted 17 sustainable development goals. Uh, for example, uh, and poverty protect the planet and ensure that by 2030 all people enjoy peace and prosperity. Still along the way. Um, and these 17 uh, goals are integrated uh, uh, action in one area. We are affecting other areas also. And I want to concentrate on three of these goals. The three first goals. No poverty, zero hunger, and good health and well-being. Um, and uh, the, the challenges of the present situation has a lot to do with environmental pollution. Uh, uh, and let us look at the effects of it. Uh, one thing is the pollution-related deaths. Uh, they are in India, for example, India, Pakistan, in some places in Africa. Also, they are between 20 to 27 percent of all deaths are related to pollution. So, that definitely affects humans, but it affects animals also. Uh, just one example is a recent study in Germany showed that uh, in the last 25 years, there was a reduction of 75 percent in insect population. That is a big, 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 big catastrophe. Also, plants are affected. Leaves are damaged, uh, damaged, and that makes plants more vulnerable to pests and diseases. And then for the synthesis is reduced, growth is reduced, and the yield comes down by 5 to 20 percent. Uh, so, uh, the all life on this planet is affected by this overall pollution of the environment, of the atmosphere, water resources, and soil. Plants are affected, animals, and also humans are affected. So it's a tremendous challenge. And what are possible solutions? Uh, the solution which I want to present here is based on Agni Hotra and homotherapy, which comes from Vedic knowledge. Uh, what is homotherapy? It's the science of feeling the atmosphere through pyramid fires to eliminate pollution and contamination. Uh, what you need is a small copper pyramid of fixed size and shape. The ingredients are dried cow dung, pure cow's ghee, and unbroken, unpolished rice grains. Then you need the Sanskrit mantras, which is an exact vibration, and the timetable of sunrise and sunset. Why? the exact vibration, these mantras, and why the exact time. This description of sunrise given in this ancient knowledge, which says, at sunrise, many fires, electricities, ethers, and more subtle energies come all the way from the sun to the place of the earth where the sun appears to rise. And this flood of energies carries a subtle music in it, and the quintessential sound of that music is the mantras which we utter at that time. This is, explains why we need these mantras, uh, if you utter the translation, it wouldn't work. It has to be exact, this vibration, because it, uh, there's a, a resonance with the energies coming from the sun. And second, it explains why it has to be the exact time, because only for a very short time band we have this flood of energies. And interesting, uh, some American uh, astrophysicists uh, showed this slide uh, saying that at sunrise, million ampere currents come in from the sun towards the earth, and at sunset, they are thrust out again. So he confirms this traditional ancient knowledge. The mantras in the, uh, for Agni Hotta in the morning, two mantras in the evening, two mantras. In the morning, it's 
Suryaya Swaha Suryaya Idam Namama Prajapataye Swaha Prajapataye Idam Namama And uh, after Swaha each time you add one portion of rice mixed with a little bit of ghee to the fire. So in the evening it is Agnaye Swaha Agnaye Idam Namama Prajapataye Swaha Prajapataye Idam Namama The whole process takes just five to ten minutes. But what happens is, it's said that there's a channel created through all the atmosphere and prana energy, life energy, which lies above the uh, <coughs> atmosphere, comes down and from the uh, Agnihotra fire, um, our energy field is created around all plants. So plants get nutrition, plants get disease resistant, get stronger. And when the flame dies, this energy comes back and is collected in the Agnihotra ash. Therefore, this ash has healing uh, properties and uh, can be used for fertilizing the plants, uh, for dealing with any problems, and so on. Uh, now, how does Agnihotra work? First, it purifies the environment, atmosphere, water resources, and the soil, and thus brings nature back to harmony. Uh, let us look at uh, the atmosphere first. One important thing, and that is in modern agricultural sciences, uh, it's not much recognized, but in ancient knowledge, they said that uh, more than 75% of the nutrition of the plant uh, comes through the atmosphere. And that means if you make the atmosphere more nutritious and fragrant by Agnihotra and Homa, uh, these plants get a protective coating uh, and uh, diseases and fungi, pests and so on do not thrive. The plant's capacity to breathe increases and the toxic effect of choking to death due to atmospheric toxins is eliminated. Uh, let us see how Agnihotra purifies the air. You know, that different ways of uh, atmospheric pollution. One is biological, through bacteria, microbes, and so on. One is chemical, one is physical. Biological, here you see uh, the bacteria. This was a very simple uh, experiment, which was repeated in uh, many different uh, universities' uh, labs. So, uh, it, uh, you just take a petri dish uh, with some um, nutrient uh, in it, Open the petri dish for 10 minutes before acne hotter, then you close, then for incubation. You do the same thing again uh, after acne hotter. Open 10 minutes, close, and then for incubation. And you see the big difference between uh, those uh, petri dishes which were open before acne hotter, which show quite a good um, growth of bacteria, or kinds of bacteria, and the right side, not much happens. So a big reduction. Uh, that was, uh, for example, uh, done in uh, Palampur Agricultural University and published. Uh, it was published uh, <coughs> from, from other places also. So that was biological pollution. Chemical pollution is mainly SOX and NOx. And this experiment uh, was done in uh, North Maharashtra University in China. Um, it showed that after Agni Hodra, uh, you know, during acne hotter, a little bit the values go up because of the fire and so on, but then the values go down by 30 to 40 percent. Also, with physical air pollution, the particulate matter. So, uh, you perform acne hotter, and after some hours, the val all these values go down. And then, of course, this was the effect of just one acne hotter. You should continue and uh, do the next acne hotter. Um, one possible explanation for these effects is the uh, number of negative ions in the air. Normally, uh, if you have more negative ions in the air, that indicates less air pollution, a purer air. This is why uh, next to a waterfall, for example, or even in nature in the forest, you find more negative ions. Uh, in offices, there is uh, much less negative ions. You have for Magnata, a count of negative ions uh, gets up. This was 
uh, proven the first time more than 30 years ago in Germany. And now, because that's an important uh, topic, uh, some scientists in Germany uh, start a PhD project uh, on this. And here you see the peaks uh, of the negative ions during Agni at sunrise and at sunset. Let's go to water. Uh, how does Akne Hotter and Akne Hotter Ash help to purify water? This experiment was done in Pune uh, maybe 10 years ago. Uh, and they took water from a polluted river. Uh, and they poured it through a column of Akne Hotter Ash. It means they had a glass cylinder filled that with Akne Hotter Ash and poured the polluted, polluted water uh, on top of this uh, cylinder filled with Akne Hotter Ash. <coughs> Measured the quality of water water before and measure the quality of water afterwards. And um, you see all the par parameters of water quality improved, uh, especially the uh, bacterial load of the uh, water came down by 93 to 98% depending on the method they measured it. This is an example from Australia. Uh, on one farm, they uh, had a well, and the water, they found water, which was good enough, but the water was highly saline and alkaline. And uh, <clears throat> so it couldn't be used. So what they did is they performed Agnihota next to the well and added Agnihota ash, say, once in a week uh, to this well, And within six months, the water quality improved uh, totally. pH came down from 9.5 uh, to 7.2 and salinity from 1150 parts per million to 720 parts per million. Now, this is within the range which a World Health Organization gives for drinking water quality. So basically, they saved their farm by just performing a water next to the bore well. Let's look at the soil. We have to make one thing clear, the importance of soil. Often, <coughs> is, that is not well recognized. But there is a Sanskrit uh, text written uh, more than uh, nearly three and a half or four thousand years ago, and it says, upon this handful of soil, our survival depends. Husband it, and it will grow our food, our fuel, and our shelter, and surround this with beauty. Abuse it and the soil will collapse and die, taking humanity with it. And that is exactly what is happening now. According to data of the FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, today already one third of the world's soil has been degraded as compared to the situation in 1960. And they continue and say, unless new approaches are adopted, the global amount of arable and productive land per person in 2050 will be only a quarter of the level in 1960. And uh, that will just not be enough to feed this growing number of people. So the soil needs to be rejuvenated with homotherapy that works uh, well. The soil will be rejuvenated uh, uh, and different types of microorganisms, uh, starting from the level of viruses, bacteria, of fungi, algae, thrive. A healthy microflora and microfauna is created. Uh, the importance of that, I will come back to that point a little later also. And uh, that effect has been uh, proven uh, in different experiments. One was done nearly 40 years ago in U.S., uh, they examined the level of uh, water-soluble phosphorus in soil. You know, normally there's enough phosphorus in soil, but it's not water-soluble. means the plants cannot take it in. It's not a nutrient for the plants, although it's there. Uh, but if you added up hot ash to the soil, the uh, quantity of water-soluble phosphorus increased three to four times. The same experiment was uh, repeated in Germany 10 years ago, 
and uh, gave the same result. And then the question, how come? Uh, what is the mechanism? How does Akne Hotra Ash increase the quantity of water soluble phosphorus? And there was one hypothesis saying uh, probably it's the activity of some uh, <coughs> phosphorus solubilizing bacteria in soil which help make phosphorus soluble. And uh, Akne Hotra Ash uh, increases the growth and activity of these uh, bacteria. And exactly this has been confirmed in an experiment done in Ratnagiri um, in south of India, where the good mangos, uh, mangos come from. Uh, they added 1% acne hotra ash to the soil and found out that the nitrogen fixing bacteria, another very important um, type of bacteria, increased 100 times and uh, the phosphorus solubilizing bacteria even 1000 times. And at the same time, harmful fungal flora was uh, kept under control. Uh, some experiments done at the ICAR Institute uh, of Subtropical Horticulture in Lucknow by Dr. Ram uh, confirmed these results. And harmful fungi were controlled by Acne Hotra Ash, but beneficial bacteria uh, were thriving when you added Acne Hotra Ash to the soil. Uh, another example is sodic soil, sodic and saline soil. This was experiment was done in uh, Unau in UP, which is between Lucknow and Kanpur, um, in one uh, <coughs> uh, KV, uh, uh, KVK. Um, they had a plot uh, which was uh, very soil, soil was very sodic, uh, pH was 9.86. And what they did is they added Agni Hotra ash to one soil and then uh, did uh, organic farming. Another plot, they did only organic farming, no Agni Hotra ash. And the third plot was um, normal agrochemical farming. And after the season, they grew wheat. And after one season, uh, with the agrochemical uh, farming, the pH stayed the same, 9.86, with uh, normal organic farming using vermicompost, the pH came down to 9.06, but with uh, vermicompost, organic vermicompost plus Agnota ash, the pH came down to 7.67, two points in just one season, and that is an, um, a range where most plants can happily thrive. Um, also, potash and phosphorus were found in more abundant quantities on this plot with Agnota. So you could say, oh, you know, uh, Agni Hotra and Agni Hotra Ash help to bring the pH down. But no, it's not like that. There was one farm in Poland, by the way, I'm sitting on this uh, farm right now. The pH was 4.4. Some government agricultural engineers came, examined the situation, and they said, no, forget about it. Nothing will grow. Um, of course, you could put uh, tons of lime, but they didn't have the money for that. So the government uh, engineer said no hope for this farm. Still they tried uh, and they used all the Homer methods and you see here they grew all the vegetables including tomatoes. Nobody here in the area grows tomatoes. Uh, everything in abundance. Um, now let us look at the situation of the planet. Uh, worldwide there are more than 800 millions of hectares of sodic uh, and of so saline soil and approximately 180 million hectares of acidic soil. So if these lands could be reclaimed and made productive again, that would help a lot to increase agricultural production and feed a growing number of people. Why not start such a small project on either acidic or sodic soil or both, depending on what you have? Uh, the investment for such a trial is really manageable, but the possible gain is huge considering all the areas could be made productive. Uh, worldwide, nearly 1,000 million, 1 billion hectares of either sodic or acidic soil. And in India alone, you have hundreds and hundreds of uh, uh, million hectares there also. Uh, now, 
one more thing is the effect of soil on climate change. Uh, we have to make us clear that conventional agriculture is one of the biggest net emitter of carbon and all, approximately 20 to 25% of all greenhouse gases are produced by the modern food system. Uh, and one important factor is the degradation of the land, which releases large amounts of carbon uh, to the atmosphere. But with home organic farming, which is based on the use of Agnihotra, Agnihotra ash, and some additional techniques, the soil organic matter increases and soil health and soil fertility both improve. In the soil organic matter, uh, a lot of carbon is stored. How does that work? Uh, for the soil, of course, for the synthesis of plants is vital. Carbon in the form of CO2 from the air is fixed <coughs> in form of carbohydrates, which build the structure of plants. Plants store quite some carbon, more than four, 500 gigatons on the whole planet. But soil stores approximately five times more through two mechanisms. First is, the part of uh, some part of plant matter, like leaves, compost, or green manure, or roots of plants after harvesting, will be integrated in the soil and thus add to the soil organic carbon. But there's a second mechanism also. Part of the carbohydrates which the plants get through from the synthesis is transported down to the roots and released through the roots, uh, which then feed microorganisms in soil, especially bacteria and uh, fungi. Um, and these microorganisms, in return, make nutrients in the soil available for the plants, like, for example, phosphorus. And experiments have shown that Agnihotra plus Agnihotra ash help the growth of these beneficial microorganisms, for example, phosphorus solubilizing or nitrogen fixing bacteria, as I mentioned above, tremendously. Higher levels of carbon in soil improve soil health and increase yields. Chemicals, on the other hand, of modern agriculture, as well as regular tilling, disturb these microorganisms in soil, and a lot of carbon is released. The soil carbon is approximately three times of the carbon stored in the atmosphere. Using methods of orga home organic farming to increase the amount of soil organic carbon, a approximately 10 tons carbon per hectare per year could be stored in the soil. So if you do the math on large scale, not only could the present level of carbon emissions be compensated, but on top of that, uh, the present level of 410 parts per million CO2 in the atmosphere could even be brought back to a zero level of 350 parts per million CO2 within 10 to 20 years. Uh, but of course, that means uh, we would have to move towards home organic farming on large scale. Um, whether that is possible, I'll mention that a little bit later again. So, what we see is Agnihotra and home farming uh, reduce the pollution of um, plants. Uh, of uh, the soil, atmosphere, and uh, water resources, and thus helps plants, animals, and humans. Uh, let's help uh, start with the plants. There are some simple experiments um, which uh, you can easily do. I mean, I mean, even on school level, these experiments have been done. You take a picture dish with some uh, <coughs> uh, tissue. Uh, put some uh, seeds and uh, watch the germination of the seeds. Uh, you know, first here left side you have uh, you water uh, these uh, seeds with uh, just tap water. Right side you water them with uh, tap water to which water ash was added. Now you could and of course the effect is there uh, the seeds with water ash grow much better. But you could say okay, water ash as any ash has nutrients in it. Uh, so definitely, if you add any ash uh, to the um, <coughs> irrigation water, uh, the germination will be uh, increased. 
So in order to be fair, for such experiments, we always use something which we uh, call control edge. Control edge, uh, we get when we find the same substances, how done, uh, B, a little bit of rice, even also in a copper vessel, because copper could have some catalytic uh, properties for the uh, <coughs> combustion process. But we do not use, use the specific uh, primitive shape uh, of this copper vessel. We don't uh, utter the mantas and we don't do it at sunrise, sunset. Otherwise, the process is the same. But still, you see a big difference also between the effect of control ash and ducking outer ash. Um, uh, this is another other experiment. This experiment was with the Agniota ash, and this experiment was done uh, also <coughs> comparing shoot length and uh, root length uh, in the germination of seeds. Uh, but that was no Agniota ash was added, but uh, these uh, seeds were kept next to Agniota and controlled uh, away. You see the red bars show uh, the uh, shoot length and uh, root length of the plants grown in a Northern atmosphere next to Akin Hotter, and the blue uh, bars show uh, the control no Akin Hotter. Yeah. Here you see the uh, <coughs> results. Uh, then there were some controlled experiment um, on farms. Uh, for example, at the Horticultural Research Institute of Tamil Nadu. Agricultural University in Uti, uh, they compared uh, yield and quality of flowers, uh, of cabbage and potato, uh, one with organic farming, one organic farming with Agni Hotter, and then con conventional. And the result is with Agni Homa organic farming, you get higher yields and also increase this distance uh, to diseases. Here are the uh, effects on uh, <coughs> flowers on roses, and in all the uh, parameters, fresh flower weight, stalk length, flower diameter, number of flowers, and shelf life, which is very important also. Uh, home, orga home organic was the best. In uh, Palampur Agriculture University, uh, they did uh, experiments with production of lemon grass and targetus minuta. And they found out quantity increased, oil content and increased disease resistance was higher. Uh, then one uh, very interesting and important series of experiments was done at Tarabat uh, Agriculture University in Karnataka. Uh, four MSc theses were done uh, on the effect of home, uh, organic farming um, under the guidance of uh, Professor Pramod Basaka. And, uh, each of these pieces studied one crop. So one was tomatoes, one cabbage, one soybean, one okra. And the parameters they studied were the yield, pesticide diseases, and the quality and nutrient content. So the yield, you can see all the different parameters for yield, which they uh, uh, <coughs> examined. With HOMA, there was a big increase as compared to conventional. Uh, for example, in soybeans, uh, the <coughs> train yield was 26% more than in conventional. Tomatoes yield per hectare was 43% more. Uh, cabbage yield per hectare, 15% more. Okra yield per hectare, 28% more. That is a very important result because um, normally there's the apprehension when you go from conventional to organic, then there will be a drop in yield. And that is true if going from conventional to organic just means uh, you uh, leave out the chemicals. But with home organic farming, uh, you substitute the treatment with chemicals uh, with uh, this treatment of Agnihotra, Agnihotra ash, and there's some uh, other <coughs> Um, special nutrients which you prepare from Akinotra ash and Kaula and so on. If you do that, then there's not a drop in yield, even there's an increase in yield, 
So when uh, so that means we can do this also on a larger scale and still be able to feed the growing number of people with even uh, more healthy food. So here they also exam, uh, examined the pests and diseases and there was a reduction in all the different diseases and pests uh, for all the four vegetables. Then one important aspect is the nutrient content of plants. Uh, we have seen a decline in the nutrient content of plants in the last 50 or definitely 100 years. Um, so, and there's a, uh, 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 there are several reasons for that. Uh, one is choosing higher yield varieties over those with good nutrient concentration. Uh, but also reduced health, soil health and pollution of the environment play an important role. Uh, Ayurvedic doctors even have confirmed that the medical potency of plants uh, which they use is declining because of pollution in the last decades. Um, so in home organic farming, it's different. There's one example. Vanilla was grown by one farmer, Abai Mutalik Desai in Kanata near Belga, and uh, he uh, <coughs> brought his uh, produce uh, to the lab for testing, and the result was the vanillin, vanillin content was 36% by weight. And the uh, lab first thought, oh, that's not possible. Uh, they never had uh, got such a result. Normally they get maybe 25, and if it's good, 28%. So they uh, did the test again, because they thought, they had, must have made a mistake, but it was the same result. So that was some very ex, uh, extraordinary result they got with the vanillin content. So HOMA atmosphere helps to increase the nutrients in the plants. Uh, now, I come back to the uh, experiments uh, done in Darwat. We have uh, also an increase in the nutrient in con content like Soybeans, 9.5 increase in oil content. Uh, cabbage, uh, the bricks value compared uh, uh, <coughs> increased by 39%. Um, uh, vitamin C was increased. Protein content was increased. Tomatoes, uh, increase in ascorbic acid. Uh, uh, vitamin C, 49%. Uh, <coughs> Lycopene, 40%. Okra, an increase in nitrogen and phosphorus. Potassium. Uh, uh, also, the uh, trace elements copper, zinc, mangan, ferro. Um, so, you see, there's an increase in the yield, uh, there's an increase in the quality, and problems with pests and diseases are less. Now, one last point is the effect of home organic farming on biodiversity. Uh, that is a big problem. I mentioned before in <clears throat> one experiment in Germany which showed that within 25 years there was a reduction in insect population of 75%. And uh, that effect is going on. And of course, the insect population has an effect on so many other things uh, which feed on insects. And of course, the uh, bees also are part of that, uh, which which pollinate so many uh, of our <coughs> uh, fruits. Uh, um, how does Latin hot and homotherapy help in that? I just want to give two, two examples. Uh, one is the invertebrates uh, at the bottom of a riverbed, and the second is butterfly. Both experiments were done by Dr. Shalantra Sharma uh, from uh, Dunmot. Uh, and here you see the uh, invertebrates. Uh, these columns uh, just added up all the different kinds of invertebrates which were found at the riverbed. And uh, you see at the left side, there were two stations on Kareshwa and Manlesha upstream. On the right side, two uh, research stations downstream. And in the middle, that is uh, the Homa place in Mahesh. Uh, really big, big, big 
more uh, number of these invertebrates there. And uh, this slide shows similar result regarding butterflies. Uh, one uh, upstream less, downstream less, and the home up less, uh, you have much, much more. And here on this slide, <coughs> you see the multitude of butterflies uh, near this Homa therapy place. So uh, we can say the quality of uh, food will be better. The pests and diseases can be controlled. The yield will be, will be more. And also, um, biodiversity is increased. And on top of that, because uh, in home organic farming, the soil the organic matter uh, increases, this method also helps to mitigate the effects of climate change of CO, the uh, <coughs> uh, greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Uh, the bees are also an important role. They thrive in home atmosphere. Yeah. So, as a result, you can say home organic farming helps to create a sustainable future. We can achieve sustainable development from village level and thus create, guarantee global food security. And at the beginning, I mentioned three of these uh, sustainable development goals, no poverty, zero hunger, and good health and well-being. All these three goals can be achieved with home organic farming because no poverty. Many people can get employed in these small and medium-sized farms. Zero hunger, enough food can be produced as soil health is improved and good health and well-being. This is a positive side effect of home organic farming. And we've uh, seen many farmers who started this method and then automatically their health improved like one farmer, uh, his uh, <coughs> um, sugar level came down from 180 to 100 to a normal range. Uh, without, uh, he, he stopped his medicine and it was okay after that. People have uh, got cured from all different kinds of diseases like high, uh, high blood pressure, uh, <coughs> even cancer, and so on. So that is an additional side effect of Hotter and trauma therapy. Uh, that was an overview uh, of the, this method. I'm thanking you. And uh, if you want to know more, if you uh, want to contact, and especially uh, if you are interested to do some of such research also, because that is a very important topic. And now, um, Agricultural scientists, uh, they are invited to join this effort and do some experiments. I've shown some experiments are really simple, really simple. Uh, it's like the germination experiment with uh, Akinhota ash. Uh, we would be happy to send you some Akinhota ash, so it's easy for you to do this experiment. Other experiments are a little bit uh, more complicated, like, um, but it's still simple, uh, like uh, checking the effect effect of Akinhota and Akinhota ash on saline, uh, <coughs> sodic, uh, or acidic soil. That would be a very important experiment. And then, of course, uh, if you see some result, uh, it would be very interesting to examine how come, uh, what are the mechanisms. And I would say probably there is also some activity of uh, beneficial uh, microorganisms in soil which help to change, to bring the pH down when it's too high, to bring it up when it's too low, uh, and so on. So uh, I would be very uh, happy, very happy. If, uh, as a result of this uh, presentation, uh, there would be interest, interest from the side of uh, scientists or students to go further with these experiments, and I offer my help uh, uh, to uh, <coughs> coordinate such studies to show what already has been done uh, to discuss and 
so on and so on. Okay, again, thanks to the organizers. Thank you for inviting me. And I hope um, that this presentation will have uh, <coughs> aroused your interest in the subject and you are trying uh, then uh, trying to do some own studies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for presenting the significance, the importance of uh, such an ancient and Vedic technology in uh, such a nice, organized, interesting and scientific way. And definitely, we would like to uh, join our hands with you for the scientific validation of this technology of Nihotra. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, we are also very grateful to you that you have uh, uh, give a very generous gesture for helping us to carry out some research in this uh, area of Agnihotra and uh, homotherapy. Now I request Dr. Ramesh Pal, the head of the Department of Agriculture Engineering, School of Agriculture Sciences and Engineering, to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of the uh, whole organizing committee and School of Agriculture Sciences and Engineering. Dr. Ramesh Pal, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Himansu, sir. Uh, a very good evening, everyone. Dear keynote speaker of technical session first, Dr. Ulris Work, the international expert of homotherapy. I would like to extend my deep sense of gratitude to you, sir. It is your fortune that we have got such a learned personality with us. I am also thankful to key officials of the university administration, director of Director School of Agriculture Sciences and Engineering, Professor Brindra Singh, sir, and participants of faculty development program. I present my sense, sincere thanks to our university administration for organizing of one week e faculty development program on inclusion of innovative research on education for smart agriculture. I am also thankful to organizing secretary, convener, and all persons who, uh, who are directly and indirectly involved in this faculty development program. I wish you all good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ramesh. And uh, again, uh, to Dr. Ulrich, my words are definitely not capable to express my deep sense of gratitude to you. And it is every time, hearing from you, every time uh, become a uh, moment of fortune for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for giving time to us. Thank you Sir, very much. Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, sure. Uh, uh, so, Rich, uh, someone, want to, someone has a query. Yes, sure. Yeah, sure. Yes, uh, it was very nice presentation by the uh, Ulrich work. But just I want to know uh, what is a special mantra you used at the time of uh, uh, Homa? At the time no, of this, Homa? Yes. Yeah, sir. These are two mantras in the morning, two mantras in the evening. I uh, uh, uttered these, but I can do it again in the morning. Surya ya swaha, surya ya idam namama, Raja pataye swaha, Raja pataye idam namama. And after swaha, you add one portion of rice mixed with ghee to the fire. So in the evening, then it is Agna ye swaha, Agna ye idam namama. Baja pataye swaha, baja pataye idam na mama. And as I said, uh, there's a flood of subtle energies coming from the sun, and this flood of energies has a subtle music in it. And the mantras, they are the quintessential sound of this uh, music, and therefore we have kind of resonance effect. And this is one important part of. Agnihotra, because Agnihotra, it works all on the level of sound, vibration, and resonance. So that is the important thing. So it's not part of religion at all. It is pure science. It is sound, vibration, and resonance. And that is very important. And that plants uh, act uh, or respond to, to sound and to vibration, that has been shown in different experiments also. And Agnihotra has the uh, is the ideal form for that. 
Okay, sir. And what will the timings for the? It is exactly at the sunrise and sun uh, time of sunrise and sunset, and uh, now it has become very easy. Earlier, we had to do calculations and uh, find out uh, the coordinates of a place uh, in a map, and then use an al al almanac. Now it's very easy. <clears throat> There's one um, app for the mobile. Uh, yeah. If you just write down Agni Hodra Buddy, Buddy uh, means uh, like friend, B U D D Y, Agni Hodra Buddy. And uh, that it's for free, it's available both for iPhones and um, Android phones. And uh, with just a, a few clicks, you get the exact time of sunrise, sunset for the point where you are. So it's not. For example, I don't know, uh, Moradabad uh, is also a big city. So from yes. one end to the other end, there may be a difference in uh, the timings uh, of probably at least half a minute. If you go to Delhi, it is several minutes if you go from one side to the other side, from east to west. Uh, but with this uh, Agni Hotra body, it is very easy. Uh, you get the timings uh, in no time. Uh, for every day. And when you go to some other place, again, uh, a few clicks and you get the timings of that place. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sure. If anyone uh, else want to ask something, then uh, you can ask by uh, open your mic. If there is no query, then thank you very much, Dr. Ulrich. Uh, thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Uh, an important announcement for the participant that our next technical session 2 will be on the uh, morning 11 uh, on Monday. Uh, so again, we are uh, uh, always, we want you to be on time and uh, getting benefit uh, most as you can. Thank you very much. Thank you all.